Hey, Sea Wolf Community, Chancellor Sandine here with another segment of Ask a UAA Expert. Take a look. My name is Dr. Brittany Howell and I'm Assistant Professor in Population Health Sciences here at UAA. Today we're going to talk about the risk of COVID-19 for older adults. Why are older adults at highest risk of COVID-19? People over the age of age 65, um, people with diabetes, people with heart, lung, and kidney disease are at increased risk of COVID-19. Um, this is because they have lower immune function, which opens them up to the complications of COVID-19, which include respiratory distress and pneumonia. As we age, our immune function decreases and we stop producing as many white blood cells. When our bodies do recognize an invading virus, those white blood cell responses tend to be delayed. And they might also attack healthy cells. Uh, lastly, older adults are at increased risk because it appears their antibodies that they produce do not adhere very well to the coronavirus. So it's really uh, these three factors coming together that make older adults and people with um, compromised immune systems most at risk for this condition. What are the current recommendations for seniors? Current recommendations for seniors are very similar to the things that you're probably already doing. Um, engaging in thorough hand washing practices, home sanitizing practices, coughing into your elbow or arm, um, and practicing social distancing. The difference is that social distancing is a bit of a misnomer. Uh, we don't actually want to distance ourselves socially, we want to distance ourselves physically. Uh, that distinction is important because social isolation is a risk for older adults. So physical distancing, as we've been hearing, should be at least six feet apart from other people. However, when people are at increased risk, it's probably best to wear some sort of facial protection. That might be um, a surgical mask or masks that people are making at home, but personal protective equipment um, or PPEs include N95 masks. Um, this one was purchased at a home improvement store, um, but these might be hard to obtain. So any sort of facial protection is recommended for interacting with older adults or even just being in public. Another recommendation for older adults is to have a plan. This plan should probably involve um, determining what will happen if the older adult gets sick and what might happen if their primary caregiver gets sick. Um, the plan should probably be discussed with healthcare providers and other people in the family so people are all on the same page. This plan might even involve some legal documents. It might not seem like the right time to talk about these things, but a will, advanced directives, power of attorney, and living wills are all things to start considering um, as we plan for the future. This is something I recommend for all adults, not just older adults. You might even consider other plans uh, for the older adult to ensure that they always have necessary medications. Um, you might be able to obtain more from the pharmacy or help older adults set up for um, mail order prescriptions so that they get delivered. The last thing um, that we might recommend for older adults is to um, have an emergency preparedness kit. This kit probably involves some basic household supplies and enough food to allow you to stay at home without leaving for a couple of weeks. Uh, we recommend buying these supplies without hoarding and if you need guidance on creating a kit, I would recommend going to ready.alaska.gov. How can I support older adults during this time? There are a few things you can do to help support older adults during this time. Um, we would recommend that you keep social contact with older adults. So as I mentioned before, physical distancing might be different than social distancing, and it's probably a great idea to continue maintaining social contact with the older adults in your life. 
Um, these might be family and friends, but it might also be neighbors and acquaintances. So try to keep people in your thoughts and keep people um, on your radar. This might mean calling, texting, emailing, um, FaceTiming or video chatting in ways that are comfortable for the older adult. Uh, this might be a great time to teach grandma how to use FaceTime. However, not all older adults are going to respond to new technologies right now in the same way. Remember that this is a stressful time, so keeping on people's um, level and sticking with what works is probably for the best. When you interact with older adults during this time, there's a variety of things that you can do. The first might be to keep them aware of COVID-related scams. So, unfortunately, COVID-19 scams are already in the works and targeting older adults. These are usually phone calls, mail, uh, and even home visits in some cities um, to suggest that a vaccine and treatment is right around the corner and older adults need to give up their personal identifying information to get on the list. So letting people know that this is happening and they should never give out their Medicare number, social security number, or any other personal identifying information to unsolicited calls, emails, or home visits. Another thing you might be able to help older adults recognize is um, that information is always changing. And so the community mandates, our shelter in place, or hunker down orders, these all have shifting deadlines and we might just wanna make sure people know what those are. It is important to remember the social isolation risk. For older adults, the risk, the health risk of social isolation is as detrimental as smoking. So it's really important that we stay in contact with older adults. These might be phone conversations that are very lighthearted. Uh, they might be nothing about COVID at all. Um, we've got this list of questions that we call the beautiful questions in gerontology. And these are questions that ask people um, to use their imagination, to engage in storytelling, to telling their experiences, their wisdom, to talk about things that are unrelated. What is the most treasured item in your home and why? Um, what is the most beautiful place you've been to? Um, having conversations that are meaningful and important and allow elders to share their wisdom um, might be the perfect thing for them at this time. There are also a variety of other things you can do. When the snow finally stops, um, you might be able to write sidewalk chalk messages to your neighbors. Um, if you know people in assisted living or nursing homes, um, you might be able to play games through a window with dry erase boards like tic-tac-toe. Since the kids aren't really in school right now, they might be looking for pen pals at the Pioneer Home. So there's a variety of things that we can do, and there's lists all over the place for fun activities to involve children with elders during these times. The last thing I might suggest is looking into apps. If you do have um, seniors in your life that are pretty savvy with technology, there are a variety of free or low-cost apps that can ensure um, they're engaging in self-care practices that can uh, help with reducing depression or isolation. There's even an app called Live Transcribe that can help older adults video chat with people if they're hard of hearing. So the biggest take home lesson is to keep supporting older adults and to keep reaching out and contacting them during these times.